Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk about habits that Dutch people have taught me. I did a video, I think it was my last video, where I was talking about weird or strange aspects of the Dutch culture, whereas in this video I want to talk about some of those aspects of their culture that have really improved my life and habits that I've been happy to take on. Some of them a little bit more purposefully and some of them by accident, but I'm gonna talk about them all in this video, so let's get into it. So my number one habit that I've picked up from the Dutch people is being direct. Now I know a lot of expats and a lot of foreigners will say that the Dutch are notorious for being direct and it can come across sometimes as a little bit rude. I want to defend this. I don't think that that is their intention. I don't think the Dutch are being rude and I think this has a lot to do with me having learnt Dutch and learning how the words are built into sentences and how they use the language to communicate with each other. It's just how you speak. In English, we have a tendency to add in a lot of filler words. We fluff up our sentences with a lot of stuff that is completely unnecessary. And I know when I was first learning Dutch, I would take the sentence that I wanted to say in English, and then I would basically translate all of those words, put them into a Dutch order and produce my Dutch sentence. And it doesn't sound Dutch because that's not how they use the language. My partner would be like, you don't need to say that, you don't need to say that, and be taking all of these extra words that I was wanting to use all the time. The Dutch are direct, they say what they mean. And now that we're back in Australia, I have found that I've been using my English in a very Dutch way. I tend to use a lot less filler words and I just say what I mean. I'm being way more direct. People are probably thinking I'm being abrasive, but I'm not. I'm just saying what I mean and I'm getting to the point and I'm using my Dutch efficiency to get my point across. So the number two habit would be being less fake friendly. I think being in Australia and coming from an English speaking culture, we have a tendency again to use all those fluffy words but this over dramatization of being friendly and big smiles and bouncy words and sentences where the tone is like this and how are you going and what can I do for you today and big smiles and it kind of feels a little fake. Now that I've been exposed to a couple of years of Dutch culture where it's polite, it's nice, there's nothing rude about it, but it's not fake, it's not over the top, it's not too much, it's just kind of normal. And being put back into Australian culture, I'm like, why are all these people behaving like this? It's so weird. So I think I've definitely tried to take that on, only being excited and happy when I really mean it and not because I feel like that's how you should communicate with people. So being less fake friendly and being more genuine with my emotions. Now my third habit is more to do with how the Dutch plan everything. They plan ahead for everything. Doesn't matter if it's a 30 minute chat, if it's a casual coffee, if it's a drop by, the Dutch plan and weeks and weeks ahead. I know I took me a long time to get used to this when I first got to the Netherlands because I was so used to that Australian culture of like, oh, we're in the neighborhood, like let's just drop by or we just stopped in or, you know, knocking on someone's door to see if they're home and that does not exist in the Netherlands. We, you make an appointment with someone, you make it weeks in advance. I think people's private time is really sacred as well and that was something that, doesn't really exist in the Australian culture. If someone in the Netherlands has time off, that's also time for them. And if they wanna see you, they'll make time to see you. They also rarely cancel and they are always on time. And these are two aspects that I love about the Dutch culture. If you make a plan with someone, you can guarantee that it will probably go through because everyone respects each other's time. Whereas in Australia, it's that little bit more casual and if you don't make it this time, it doesn't matter, you'll just make it next time or you'll push out that date that little bit further. So I have tried to adopt this and if I make a plan, I am always on time and I stick to it. A plan is a plan. So my next point, I don't think I really realized I was doing, but when my mother came to visit us when we were living in Amsterdam and it drizzled like the tiniest bit, she was like, oh, well, we'll just stay inside today. We'll make like a home day. And 
at first I was like, but why? We've planned to do this and we've planned to do that and we're gonna to go to the market and this and that. And it is very ingrained in the Dutch culture. You just do what you gotta do. It does not matter what the weather is doing. You still need to cycle to work. You still need to walk the dog. You still need to go to the supermarket. And I think in Australia, we are very weather sensitive. There's so many sunny days and so many nice days in the year that you can afford to have that kind of attitude. If it doesn't work out today or tomorrow, it'll be sunny, we'll just do it tomorrow. The problem is, is that if you have that attitude in the Netherlands, you'd never get anything done. It rains a lot, it's windy a lot, it's cloudy a lot, or it's cold a lot. So you just have to do what you've got to do. And I love that I still will go for a walk, even if it's raining or still get outside, even if it's cold. So that has been a really good aspect of Dutch culture that I have 100% tried to incorporate into my own life and stop being such a weather sensitive Australian. This probably follows onto my next point, which is dressing for the weather. I think in Australia, we basically pretend that winter doesn't exist and still wear shorts and t-shirt in winter, which makes no sense. But in Dutch culture, especially probably this is more aimed at the women, they don't dress over the top. There's not a lot of makeup. They don't wear heels very often. Practicality and comfortability are like priority number one when it comes to dressing yourself. And I love that. I love that things are kind of a little bit more casual, even if you are going out for an evening meal, you can just wear jeans and a nice top and that's enough. So I like that, be warm, be comfortable, be practical in the way that you dress, be presentable and that's, that's it. So I have definitely taken that habit on board and I'm a big fan of it. Now this one I'm still working on, but I do do massively appreciate it. I think that the Dutch are very good at asking for what they want. And in Australian culture and in English speaking culture, you kind of dance around topics a little bit. And I mentioned this earlier in the fact that we add a lot of fluff to how we're speaking. The Dutch have a saying and it goes, en nee heb je, maar een ja kan je krijgen. So essentially it's saying that you have a no, but you can get a yes. And I think the saying that we probably have in English would be, you never know unless you ask. The Dutch are very good at asking. If you want that discount, if you want that freebie, if you want that pay rise, if you want that promotion, there's no harm in asking, but you have to ask to see if you'll get it. So I love this. I'm definitely trying to purposefully create this and ask for those things and ask for what I want and it makes a big difference. So this is a very good habit to take on board. This and nee heb je maar een ja kan je krijgen. The next habit is looking for a bargain. The Dutch have been known to be tight with their money and don't even get me started with tiki. <sighs> But looking for a bargain and looking for value in what you purchase has been a really good habit to take on board. The Dutch will research things and search for different options and prices at different places and make sure that what they're purchasing is 100% what they want and that they've found that product or that thing for the best value possible, the best bargain. So being with my Dutch partner for the last three years has definitely made me way more financially aware. I'm way less willy-nilly with my money and we definitely search for a bargain. He, to be fair, when we were in Asia, he was the one that did all of the haggling and all of the negotiating because it's just in his bones to be like that. But I've learned a lot from him and I've learned a lot about looking for a bargain. So that is another part of the Dutch culture that I have 100% taken on board. So my very last habit that I have learned from the Dutch people would be to use public transport and walking and biking, cycling to get places and adopting this and being outside and being kind of more active, I guess, in where you go and how you get there. Coming from Australia, a country that is so spread out, every time you leave the house, you get in the car and you've got this whole country that has this very strong car culture. And when I got to the Netherlands, we had been cycling in Asia for about 10 months. So I like to joke and say that that was my test to see if they'd let me in, but I was cycling everywhere and it really drummed out that car culture that you need a car to get places. So we have been 100% reliable on 
public transport and cycling and walking to get our daily things done, groceries, get to work, all of those things. And it's not weird to not have your driver's license in the Netherlands. It's super expensive. So the government itself even discourages people from wanting to get their license. So I love this fact about the Dutch culture and I've definitely been trying to adopt that. It's been tricky here knowing that everything's so spread out that we do jump in the car a lot more often, but I cannot wait to get back to the Netherlands and jump back on our bikes and be riding around, especially now that our daughter is old enough to be jumping on with us. So they are my habits that I have learned from the Dutch. If you have been living in the Netherlands or you've picked up some Dutch habits, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to read them and hear about them. If you liked this video, then please give it a big thumbs up. It really helps out my channel. And if you want to see more videos about language learning and learning Dutch, then please remember to subscribe and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.